Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word. So I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. God is here. Amen. My dear friends, I want you to believe this, that you are here because God wants you to be here. You believe in that? Yes, your friend was the one who brought you here. Yes, you know, maybe you've been coming here for a few weeks. And sometimes that's a problem. Our problem is it gets, you know, function. It's like, yeah, why, why, why be here? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Why? Why? Oh, because there's a feast. And, 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 yeah, it's a habit. And that's a routine. It's, you know, something that I do. It's a good thing. But you know what we lose? Ask me what? Expectation. I want you to raise your expectation that you are not just attending an event. You are going to encounter the living God. You're going to go face to face with Jesus. And you know what? Let me, let me tell you something about Jesus. He's unpredictable. You, you do not know what He's going to do when you meet Him. And you're going to meet Him right now. You've been meeting Him. The encounter is going on. And He's not finished with you yet. Do I hear a loud amen? He is unpredictable. What God will do in your life right now, in your encounter with Him, you don't know. And so what you need to do is widen your expectation and say, Lord God, you do what you want to do. You do what you do best. You work in my life. Remove what you need to remove. Shape what you need to shape. Mold what you need to shape. Change what you need to shape. Add what you need to add. Subtract what you need to subtract. You do what you want to do with my life. My answer is yes. I want you to say yes. I want you to elbow somebody beside you and tell that person, say yes. Say yes. Amen. Could you be seated for a while? Before we call on our preacher for today, I'm excited to hear his word. But what, what I want to what just share with you is, you know, how, how many of you sometimes you, you look around you and you attend the feast? And how many of you have been here for more than a year? More than a year? More than two years? More than three years? More than 10 years? You know, if, if you've been attend, ask me, how many years? Ask me. How many years? 43. 43 years. 43 years ago, I was there in the garage in the first feast. We did not call it feast then, just a prayer meeting, but I was there. And sometimes when you keep attending the feast, you know what happens? You begin to lose gratitude. You lose gratitude for how amazing the feast is and how amazing the people around you are. Let me share with you this one woman who started with me many, many years ago at the feast. Not at the very start, but somewhere along the start. Her name is Fe Briones. And she was a woman who, single woman, started serving the Lord, started saying yes to God. Became a small group leader, you know, um, took care of some of the singles, single women. And then somewhere along the way, I had a call from God to build Anawim, our ministry for the abandoned elderly. But at that time, I still didn't even know, you know, like, like what, what's it going to be like? But I knew that we're supposed to get this big property, five hectares in Montalban Rizal, called Rodriguez now. And I, I told my friends at the feast, here in the light of Jesus, I said, who wants to come with me? But God has to call you. God has to call you to serve with me. 
And at that time, Fe Briones uh, was a very accomplished professional. You know, her, her resume reads Bank of America. It's like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> like she, she was really like hitting it off in her career. And, and, and then from there, she went to another job. And when, you know, she, she was doing so well. There were four people who told me, we're going to build Anawim with you, Brother Bo. Jodine Sola, Ardis Sola, they're, they're leading He Cares Foundation, our street kids ministry right now. Tita Nening, she, she was our cook, and she, she owned her canteen, and she left that, and she started serving with us. And then, Fe Briones, and she said yes. And so we transferred to this property that had nothing, kugon grass, nothing else, no electricity, no running water. And we lived in that land for three whole years. We, we slept in Bahay Kubo, Nipa slats, bamboo slats. And little by little, the poor people would come. We would welcome them. The orphans came. The, the abandoned elderly came. We started picking up lolos and lolas from the streets and bringing them back to Anawim, and Anawim started growing. Um, three years after, I told Fe, I told the others there, we grew already a number of volunteers, and I told Fe, Fe, I'm, I'm getting married. <laughs> I, I have to leave you guys. And Fe took over. Fe took over Anawim. And then a few years later, Fe said, Brother Bo, can I talk to you? I said, sure. My mom needs me. I'm here taking care of other lolos and lolas, and, but my mother needs me. God wants me to go back home to Bohol to take care of my mom. And I said, please do that. And so she went home. And in Tagbilaran, she kept on saying yes to God. While taking care of her mom, she starts a small feast in her home. And, and Fe is not a preacher. Fe is not a worship leader. But she loves people. And she started loving the young people who came to her house. And there were very few. And she started loving them and serving them. And the feast there grew because God raised up leaders and preachers in the feast. And last week, Fe messaged me. And she said, Brother Bo, our feast is growing. We're now full capacity in our venue. Too many people were putting up another feast. Brother Bo, I heard that you're coming here to Tagbilaran to give a TRC seminar. Please visit our servants. She texted me on a Thursday. I could not respond. I was so busy, but I was able to read her message. The next day, Fe was on the computer. I was told, and then slowly her head slumped. And she's in heaven. And she was not sick. But just God called her. No pain, no struggle. Just, I need you here. And she said, yes. I need you here in heaven, Fe. And she said, yes. The feast is a beautiful community because this is a home, a home of people like Fe, who for the past almost 40 years have said yes and yes and yes to God. This is an amazing place. If you're new with the feast, I'm telling you, we're not perfect. And we've got, we've got, you know, very imperfect people here. But I'm telling you, this is an amazing community because we've got people like my friend Febriones 
who kept on saying yes to God all her life. Anawim will not be Anawim if it were not for faith. And the feast in Bohol will not be there the way it is now if it were not for faith, who could not preach, who could not lead worship, but she loved people. And you know what? Right now, God is calling you to serve Him. How? Don't look at me. I don't know. But God is calling you and God is saying, I want to use you to be a blessing to other people. Will you say yes? And if you say yes, look at him and tell him, I can't do this on my own. You've got to be the one to do this. And you know what Fea has taught me? I'm going to go off the stage now. Call, call the preacher. But, you know, I, I said, Fea, I was not able to respond to you. 24 hours before you died. I was not able to respond. So, Fe, you hear me now? I'm going to Bohol. I'm going to meet the servants. <laughs> and uh, a beautiful life, well lived. And I want to be like Fe. You want to be like Fe? Serve until the end of your breath. You want that? You writing in the laptop and then that's it say yes so beautiful amen one more time tell somebody beside you keep on saying yes keep on saying yes our preacher be blessed by this man JC Libiran for our talk today since we are on the series thanks living we will talk about generous living and our one big message is this everybody the more you give the more you receive there's this book by Adam Grant the title is give and think it's a revolutionary way approach to success and he says that there are three kinds of people in this world there are takers, and there are the people who just want to receive, receive, receive. There are matchers, and their motto is, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. But there are people who are also called to become givers. Giving without expecting something in return. I want you to ask yourself in your life, in your family, in your business, in your advocacies, which are you among these three? You see, it's also noteworthy mention that generosity factor is spread out all in the scriptures. And as we look into this in the Gospels of Mark, that rich young man asking for counsel at the crossroads, what is it that he must do to have eternal life? And still, even if the Lord has given him the mission of what to do, he had a difficult time of letting go of what he has. In contrast to that poor widow, he has, she has that only money, but still, he put it. He, she gave it to the Lord because she knows that it belongs to the Lord. Here's another. We look into the parable of the unforgiving servant. The master has forgiven that servant for all his debts. That's in gasp, the Gospel of Matthew. But on the other hand, we find that this same servant doesn't know how to forgive his fellow servant. We also look into the parable of the Good Samaritan. That man lying on the road, the first two pass by, but here comes a Samaritan in the Gospel of Luke giving everything in order to help and in order to restore this person's life. So you see, it's not just in the scriptures, but it really reminds us that the foundation of this, we should all receive this truth that God is the owner of everything. Can you just elbow the person beside you and remind that person, God owns everything. 
and we need to be reminded that we have a lot of blessings, yes, but we need to focus on the blesser, and we know that when we focus on God, everything else will be added on to us. And that's why there's this word in Filipino, unlad, unahin natin lagi ang Dios. When we put God first, everything else will be added unto us. But we all know what happened in the creation story. We are reminded that Adam and Eve did not follow God, they disobeyed God. But still, we are reminded today of our call to stewardship. That everything that we see, that we have, belongs to God, and we are asked to be stewards, to take care of what God has given us. So I want to ask you this question. How are you taking care of everything that God has given you in your life? We are reminded that the secret to living is giving. And even the poet Maya Angelou said this, giving liberates the soul of the giver. Yes? Brother JV even shared this with us in the first talk, Grateful Living. We decide, we choose to be grateful for what has been, what is now, what will be, and what may not be. And that's why I remember Brother JB and I, together with some young builders, years ago, we had a vacation, like three-day vacation with Brother Bo, with the leaders, and everything was taken care of. No? Samalit sabi, libre, all expense paid. And we were so blessed because we are just receiving it. Na libre kami. Pero alam nyo, we came to the realization that it's good to experience these blessings, ma libre, but what's on the other side of us naman libre? Tayo yung mag-provide. We are the ones donating. We are the ones supporting. And we dream of that. Can you look at the person beside you? Is that person a giver or a taker? Gusto niyo bang man libre o gusto niyang magpalibre? <laughs> we want to experience both, right? In, in my life, I can say that after that experience, it has come true. In my own special ways, little ways, I'm able to become not just blessed, but also a blessing to my family, to my friends, to our feast, and whenever I'm being called to serve outside in the content that I do, and so and on. Friends, say this with me. Put both of your hands in your hearts. Say this. I am blessed to be a blessing. Say to the person beside you, you are blessed. You are a blessing. Let's give her the big hand. Let me introduce you to one of my mentors who is a philanthropist. His name is Tony Robbins. And he said this, It is not what we get, but who we become and what we contribute that gives meaning to our lives. And he's just, not just known no, for his uh, transformational events, but he's also known in really donating a lot to charity, most especially to this um, ministry, Feeding America. But, you know, when you look back, he was not that at the beginning. There was a time in his life when he was a kid that they were so poor and he was so hungry and someone gave a food basket at their doorstep. And ever since he experienced that generosity, that's, that love, that blessing, he made the decision that I'm going to pay it forward. And I believe, my dear friends, we don't need billions or millions to become philanthropists because we are all God's philanthropists. Say to the person beside you, you are God's philanthropist. Because a philanthropist is someone who shares his resources, skills, network, time, money in order to create a better world. So don't be caught up with all the glitz and glamour that you need to be like this for you to be a philanthropist. You are already a philanthropist in your own special way. For those of you who are into journal writing, reflections, in the feast, light, or maybe our light groups, I invite you to have these questions. No? First is, how has God been generous in your life? And number two, 
how can you be more generous to others? Yes? We are also reminded that generosity is not just an act, but it is a way of life. So can you all do this quick exercise with me? Okay, everybody sit up straight. Inhale. Exhale. So you see, that's the normal way. But how about if we do this? Inhale. 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 Oh, diba? You're having a difficult time already. So you cannot take everything. You need to receive. You need to give. And the world needs more givers, more generous people. When we make a decision to give, in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25, this is what it says. A generous soul will prosper, and he who refresh others will himself be refreshed. And that's why I like to honor all of our servants that you see here. Can you just give them a round of applause? <laughs> Mother, even, Mother Teresa even reminded that it is not how much we give, but how much love we put into giving. Let us not be satisfied with just giving money. Money is not enough, but they need your hearts to love them. So spread your love everywhere you go. Even after the feast, bring it at home. Bring it in your workplaces. Bring it in your business. Bring it to those people who need this the most. I love the story of the boy who have five loaves and two fish. And it is not enough, yes, but in the hands of God, it became one of the miracle story. And that's why I'm asking you as well right here, right now, what is it in your hands that God has given you? Maybe in your own capacity, it's just little. Offer it to the Lord. Just like what Brother Bo was sharing earlier about faith, giving her all to God. And it multiplies. In the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11, it says, Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. Instead of isipin, no? think of this, that you won't just ask for answered prayers, but you will be God's answered prayer to the people around you. Amen? Now, let's get practical. Let me share with you now four ways to live a generous life. And this is the first one. Be generous with your time. And we all know that we are equal when it comes to this. There are 86,400 seconds every day. How are you using the most precious gift of time? Are you using it to advance the kingdom of God, to advance and pursue the things that matters most to you, your dreams, your aspirations? Or maybe you are lost in the scrolling, in social media, to the point that you weren't able to do what you're supposed to do. I believe, my dear friends, all of us are challenged now no? to share and be generous with our time, most especially with the people that matters most to us. You see, if you want to see the value of time, try to visit someone who is dying, wanting to extend his or her life. And that's why I want you to say this to the person beside you. Look at the person beside you. It's your time. In Filipino, oras mo na. Uh, but it's your time to grow. It's your time to move. It's your time to forgive. It's your time to be a blessing to people. That's number one. Be generous with your time. This is number two. Be generous with your talent. And that's why, my dear friends, I'm standing here in front of you, not because I'm already, you know, all perfect, but actually, I'm continuing, harnessing, in progress with the gifts, the talents that God has given me. And I'm very grateful that because of the feast, when I look back, no, way back in college, when I started attending the feast, I aspired just to serve from the children's ministry. And from the children's ministry, I got to serve in the worship ministry. After that, in the campus missionary missions, and then eventually now in feast building as well. But I believe, my dear friends, it's not just in the feast. 
but maybe in your own way, how are you developing the gifts and talents that God has given you? So say to the person beside you, you are talented. You are talented. Use it. In Filipino, talentado ka, di ba? This is now number three. Be generous with your treasure. And I believe this is not just during the love offering part, but being generous with your treasure speaks about that it's always having that intentional thinking, living, that I'm going to continue to share my time, my talent, and my treasure, not just in the feast, but even beyond this. You don't have to go far, maybe at your home. They are in need of you. They are wanting to have more time with you, to have more opportunities to spend and create memories with you. But of course, we all know that we cannot give to charity if we are a charity case ourselves. No, we cannot give to tights if our budgets are tight. And that's why Brother Bo, in his book, The Abundance Formula, encourages us to earn our income 100%. You give your all. Use the talent that God has given you. Monetize it. Of course, tithes is when we give to God our best, our first fruits. If you cannot do the 10%, you can start with 1%, 2%, 3%. There are some people, they have decided to make it reverse tithing. They're already giving majority of what they're earning because that's how good their finances are, their wealth are. We have savings. Because it's always reminding us that we are not always strong. We need to prepare for our future, 20%. And then for our expenses, it's the 70%. But normally what happens, it's a lot of add to carts, a lot of expenses. Instead of us making God first, taking care of ourselves. So say to the person beside you, take care of your finances. Here's the last one, number four. Be generous with your testimony. And that's why the book that I'll be launching today, Life Begins Today, Inspirations and Reflections to Guide Your Way, it's my third book. The first one was Biyahe Ni Juan. The message is Enjoy the Ride of Your Life. The second book was Full Hearted, 21 Ways to Live a Courageous Life. And it's Embracing Life Full Heartedly. And finally here, it's a challenge now to live life to the max with meaning, appreciation, and extraordinary. It's actually a collection of my writings, 10 years of my testimony of how God has been faithful in my life. And I believe, my dear friends, you may not be an author or writer, but you have God's story within you. You are capable of sharing that powerful story that people need to hear. So say to the person beside you, share your testimony with your friends, family, and eventually the Lord will use it to bless people. Can I ask you to stand? Just to wrap this up, the Lord invites us, be generous with your time, talent, treasure, and testimony. And my dear friends, you see when we give this, to the people around us, to the people that matters most to us, to where God is calling us, to the lost, the last, and the least, we know that we can never outgive God when it comes to His generosity. Amen? And that's why we're reminded in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 38, Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together, to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap, the amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Ask God to bless you, not just for your own sake, not just for the people that you want to benefit from your blessings, but there are people out there who needs you, who needs your time, who needs your talent, who needs your treasure, who needs your testimony. And when you give it to the Lord, just like that boy, the Lord will use your five loaves and two fish. See, when you look into the cross, the Lord died not just for Himself. He didn't die like this. He didn't die just for one person. 
He died for all. He died for you, for you, for you, for you, for the salvation of mankind. You can never outgive God when it comes to His generosity because He paid the ultimate sacrifice, His love. You know, that God has given you that eternal love, that precious love. What will you do with it? Say yes to being generous, to being a giver in this world of a lot of takers and matchers. And your life will never be the same again. It is so beautiful to be in the presence of God. And can we pray right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I want you just to lift up to him all your needs, whatever you're going through. He knows what you're going through. He knows where you're coming from. He knows the burdens of your heart. Just, just bring it up to God and say, Lord, I surrender everything that all hurt and all pain and all worries and all fear. Lift them all up to you, Lord. I surrender them to you. You are my king and you are the center of my life. And I trust you and I know that you are blessing me right now. I receive your love. I receive your joy. I receive your peace. I receive your healing. I receive your provision in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Live a fantastic life.